Martinez, Head of Scientific and Technical Cooperation and Political Affairs at the Embassy of Mexico in Korea. I express all my gratitude to the Korean Women's Development Institute for organizing this event and for giving me the opportunity to keep collaborating with you. My main goal with today's presentation is to reflect on the importance of having a feminist foreign policy by illustrating the Mexican case. Next slide, please. Since a few years ago, Mexico has included the gender perspective in its national development plan and has focused on the need to incorporate it into all government actions, including foreign policy. Possibly the starting point was the organization of the first World Conference on Women in Mexico City in 1975, where the first multilateral guidelines on gender equality were established. From that moment onwards, in line with Mexico's activism to include gender perspectives in the UN development agenda, particularly the adoption of the Beijing Platform for Action in 1995, the multilateral actions of Mexico have been transformed into national policies. In 1998, the National Commission for Women, Con Mujer, was founded and transformed in 2001 into the National Institute for Women in Mujeres and then other national and local institutions were created afterwards. In 2006 and 2007, two of the main pillars of the national legal framework on gender equality were established. The general law for equality between women and men and the general law for the access of women to a life free from violence. Then other breakouts followed, such as the categorization of feminism femicide in the National Criminal Code in 2011, as well as the electoral reform in 2014 to guarantee that 50% of political party, parties candidates are women. With the 2019 constitutional reform on gender parity, Mexico advanced towards the consolidation of a true representative, participatory and inclusive democracy. Women must, not, women must now occupy half of the decision-making positions in the three branches of the federal government, executive, legislative, legislative, and judicial in the three levels of government, municipalities, states, and national level, in the autonomous institutions, and in the political parties candidates subject to popular vote. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned before, Mexico has been traditionally characterized by the defense of gender equality and promotion of human rights of all women and girls in the regional and multilateral arena. One of the guiding principles of Mexico's multilateral policy is gender equality and non-discrimination based on the conviction that to achieve social well-being and development, no one can be left behind. With this belief, the Mexican government has carried out a series of actions aimed at achieving substantive equality between men and women. In this context, during the 74th session of the United Nations General Assembly in September 2019, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Marcelo Ebrard, stated that Mexico is a feminist country and our foreign policy will be also feminist. Since then, he instructed the Vice Minister for Multilateral Affairs and Human Rights, Marta Delgado, to conceptualize and to design the Mexican feminist foreign policy. In January 2020, Mexico launched officially its feminist foreign policy. With this announcement, Mexico assumed new challenges and commitments by becoming the first country in Latin America to adopt a feminist policy, and it inscribes itself worldwide in a small group of countries sharing this policy together with Canada, Sweden, France, Luxembourg, and more recently, Spain. Next slide, please. So Mexico's feminist foreign policy is defined as a set of principles that seek from a foreign policy perspective to guide Mexican government actions towards reducing and eliminating structural differences, gaps, and gender inequalities to build a more fair and prosperous society. The Mexican feminist foreign policy recognizes that the government is responsible in providing all the normative, institutional, financial, and human tools to attain progress towards rights and liberties. 
and the, that the feminist struggle for gender equality represents a pioneer model towards emancipation of most vulnerable groups in our society. Next slide. So uh, the Mexican foreign ministry uh, has five pillars on this uh, foreign policy. Uh, the first one is a foreign policy with a gender perspective a feminist agenda that takes Mexico's international leadership on gender issues to the next level. The second pillar is parity within the foreign ministry and organizational reforms to achieve gender equality in the workplace. Uh, currently, the law of the Mexican Foreign Service is undergoing reform to include a gender perspective and to make it gender equal. Myself, as of many of my colleagues, have been sharing their opinions on how to uh, amend this proposal for the new law. Third, a foreign ministry that is free from violence and that emphasizes collective action to create a working environment free of gender-based violence. Violence fourth, making feminist leadership visible and raising awareness of women's contribution to Mexico foreign policy. Hence my presentation here with you today. And number five, an intersectional feminist approach to all foreign policy actions. This means that every axis of Mexico's foreign policy will be guided by the principle of feminism. For example, international cooperation and assistance. Moreover, it considers that although international instruments or human rights are mandatory, they should also be promoted as guiding tools for national policy on gender equality and women empowerment. Next slide, please. So Mexico feminist foreign policy has four goals, which are first, body autonomy and sexual and reproductive health and rights. Second, elimination of all forms of discrimination and violence against women and girls. Third, the intersectional perspective, considering that women are not a homogeneous group, but there, are, there is a great diversity of women and girls with differentiated needs. And fourth, the promotion of disaggregated statistics and data with a gender perspective. Let us remember that we, we do not, we, what we could not measure, we cannot fix. Next slide, please. Uh, on 2020, the Mexican feminist foreign policy focused on COVID-19 impacts and on, in overcoming these impacts that, as we know, disproportionately affect women and girls worldwide. Due to this reason, Mexico strengthened its cooperation with Canada through the Canada Fund for Local Initiatives. Uh, the resources of this fund provide support to civil organizations who help women and girls who are victims of violence. Mexico also joined the global citizen campaigns, committing to actions in favor of rights of women and girls. Further, the government of Mexico ratified the Domestic Workers Convention, Convention 189 of the International Labor Organization, on July 3rd, 2020. With this, Mexico reinforces its commitment of improving the condition of 2.4 million people working in the household. Uh, Mexico also promoted the resolution on the elimination of discrimination against women and girls in the Human Rights Council. In August, 2020, we presented our midterm report to the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women Committee in follow-up to the recommendations to er eradicate gender-based violence. So, uh, next slide, please. My, uh, Sandra Cohen from the Embassy of uh, France already uh, mentioned the Generation Equality Forum. So I will talk about the main results that uh, happened in Mexico City from March 29th to 31st. Um, the Action Coalition blueprints were presented, and this will serve as catalysts for inspiring and mobilizing broader commitments in Paris, where the culminating event will take place from June 30th to July 2nd. In Mexico City, youth and civil society leaders launched the vision for 2026 and a shared feminist path. This progress was made possible by a Byram inter intergenerational coalition of actors representing government, civil society, women and youth organization, the private sector. A 
philanthropy and international organizations. About 10,000 people attended the forum with over 250 speakers from 85 countries. Uh, in keeping the spirit of involving new generations, almost half of the participants were under 30 years of age. The forum was held virtually due to COVID-19 pandemic, and it highlighted the urgent need to act and invest in women's rights. Um, during this forum, Mexico launched the Group of Friends of Gender Equality, 21 member states that pledge to coordinate efforts and promote gender equality multilaterally. Of course, uh, the, the countries here, including Korea, are in part of this group. Thanks to the proposal of my French colleague, Sandra Cohen, our embassies have been working together towards the promotion of the Generation Equality Forum. Korea joined as a commitment maker on the Action Coalition on Gender-Based Violence. My gratitude, Sandra, for all your support in working with me. I would like to take this opportunity to thank as well the Korean Women's Development Institute for your support in organizing an event last November for promoting this forum. After all, this is what gender equality is about, collaborating with women to help other women. We will continue to promote the Generation Equality Forum in 2021, and Mexico is part of the Coalition of Action on Economic Rights and Justice. Next slide, please. In the regional context, in December 2020, the presidents of the Pacific Alliance countries, Chile, Colombia, Mexico, and Peru, signed a declaration for gender equality and recognized the need to develop policies to promote the economic rights of women and girls, particularly in the context of COVID-19 pandemic. Also at the regional conference on women in Latin America and the Caribbean of 2020 and 2021, Mexico, Chile, and Argentina promoted the Santiago, Santiago commitments on sexual and reproductive health and rights, inter intersectionality, and the eradication of violence amongst others. So uh, next slide, please. The importance of cooperation for attaining gender equality. A feminist foreign policy can be a catalyzer for national policies. An equal society does not have to be limited under, only to gender equality, but it can be a good starting point for departure to address other inequalities. Hence, the feminist foreign policy should be integrated into other national efforts, such as implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Clearly, the struggle for gender equality must be based on listening to the voices of women and all vulnerable groups. The value of a feminist foreign policy is that it contributes significantly to the country's national development. One of Mexico's priorities is leave no one behind. In this regard, having a feminist policy will enable us to place women and girls at the center of the country's welfare policies, both at the national and international levels. It would not be coherent to promote such a foreign policy if gender gaps and inequalities continue at the domestic level. That is why we're interne interested in international cooperation with countries with feminist foreign policies or with countries like Korea, which are considering its advantages. From sharing out experiences, we learn how to advance towards the construction of an egalitarian and more inclusive society. The Mexican for feminist foreign policy also seeks to address the international recommendations on the human rights of women and girls that various international agencies have made to Mexico by harmonizing our national legislation and by improving effectively the justice administration with a gender perspective. Next, please. With its feminist foreign policy, Mexico will continue to promote a progressive agenda on gender equality and human rights of women and girls. The priority of policies on gender equality reflect on the national level. Mexico is clear about the challenges that we face in terms of gender equality and is working to overcome them. In the words of the Vice Minister for Multilateral Affairs and Human Rights, Marta Delgado, Without us, women, the development of a sustainable world is not possible. For this reason, Mexico is in favor of a feminist foreign policy. I congratulate the Korean Women's Development Institute for organizing this forum. Kamsa Mita. <laughs>